Hello, shall we talk about the small matter of England now going 11 games unbeaten under Serena Vigman? Uh, well done last night to England. The Lionesses once again travelling away to Northern Ireland and uh, securing all five goals and no doubt qualifying for the World Cup as well. They're top of the group at the moment, but they've still not really meet their match. That's the thing with England. I feel that this tournament so far, they haven't been challenged. They've got the Netherlands coming up. They've got Belgium coming up as well. So it's definitely going to be more tricky as they move into this campaign. But looking back to last night in Northern Ireland at Windsor Park, a huge occasion, a huge occasion. Now, I have family in Northern Ireland. I was out seeing them at the summer and I was telling them that Northern Ireland are going to the Euros and what a huge achievement that is. And uh, the people who I were with, who I count as some of my oldest friends and family, um, had no idea that you know Ireland had a national women's team. And that what's sad is that a lot of the members of that team aren't even full time. Now, changes are being made there and new legislation has come into play. Uh, but for Ireland playing, at, well, Northern Ireland playing last night at Windsor Park, uh, with a record turnout of 15,000 was a very, very special day uh, for Northern Ireland women and young girls aspiring to be footballers as well. Now, you will have heard about the, the shadow which was cast over um, the whole game actually in the, the post-match interview with Northern Ireland boss Kenny Shields. Now, he's been in charge of Northern Ireland since 2019. He was the man at the helm of getting them through to the Euros what a fantastic job he's done for the women in that, in, in that team and for that country. Um, however, in his post-match press conference last night, um, he said that when women concede goals, they don't take it too well because they're more emotional, which leads them to then concede more goals and more goals. Now, this is a massive issue for me and for the women's football community, for fans and for players and for managers as well. And for really anyone with half a brain, um, reason being he has labelled all women in football as emotional and the reason that maybe there are more goals in the women's game is because women are emotional. Just uh, when you listen to it in full, it's a, a real kind of cringe moment and a real disappointing thing for him to say. I feel that he's bailed on his squad there um, when they're needing the love most, you know, to, to be beaten under those circumstances by England, 5-0 at home on such a big night for them, for the manager to then make that uh, statement it, it is almost just a bit of a shame considering he's better than that. However, what I will say is that Kenny Shields has had form. He was once in charge in Scotland actually in 2013. He was in charge of Morton, he had just come from Kilmarnock and uh, he had said that he was no longer going to speak to the press because um, it made him emotionally imbalanced. Um, and he said that the quote is, there's a name for it, you can't help it. Someone ask a question, you're emotionally imbalanced at the time and feel an urge to tell the truth. There are people out there waiting for you to drop your guard. So because of these reasons, um, he said that his doctor had advised him not to, to speak to the press. It's almost like Kenny Shields preempted that he is very good at putting his foot right in his mouth and it has a little bit of that verbal diarrhea and will get himself in trouble. So what I think about this is that actually reading back this article with this article resurfacing of him saying that he didn't want to speak to the press before because it was bad for his emotional imbalance, I think kind of saves his skin a little bit. Um, I don't think we should see a manager get the sack for comments like this. It's the label. It's the label that he's given all women in football now. If Kenny Shields comes out and says, you know, uh, my team last night or my team tonight were, you know, they all got a bit emotional. You know, the, their emotions took over. They, you know, they conceded silly goals. Uh, they made bad challenges. You know, we were, we were dicing with red cards. Then you can understand that their decision making possibly were emotional decisions um but just due to conceding goals you know he said as well that you know you can concede goals and there's a pattern in women's football when a goal is conceded then then it happens kind of quite quickly after there you can see then goals being conceded every two minutes but that, that's not the case when it came to last night's game whatsoever the first goal was uh, by lauren hemp at 26 minutes for england then it was half time so they were one nil down at half time what did he see in his team talk you know, take you know, take responsibility. Perhaps he didn't get it right. It certainly did, wasn't down to women being emotional in terms of why they went on to lose that game. And the next goal wasn't till 52 minutes. 
five nil is an absolute battering, but from a side like England, who are now 11 games unbeaten, probably favourites to do very, very well in the World Cup and in the Euros. They're a very, very strong side and Serena Wiegmann is an excellent manager. I don't think this is anything for Northern Ireland to be ashamed by at all, nor him. I just wish he hadn't made the night, you know, go into it. I mean, no one's focusing on the game. No one's focusing on how Northern Ireland played. They could have been better. But the focus is on these comments from their manager, uh, which, which is an absolute shame. Um, Kenny Shields had also said in the past, I'm probably not intelligent enough to deal with it because journalists can catch me out. Now, he didn't, I think even then, you know, preempting that a journalist can catch him out is a bit of an issue as well for me because he just put his foot in his mouth. If he thinks that, that women can see more goals because they're emotional, then he needs to understand women a little bit better. And maybe he's not as good a manager as I once thought that he was going to be. Um, so yeah, Kenny Shields has apologised for his comments um, and right now is still in charge of Northern Ireland. I think he could bring some lols uh, to, to England here when they come for the Euros in the summer, which of course kicks off in July. He'll be an interesting man to keep track of. But what I will say is that, that Northern Ireland being on that stage last night, they're not, they're not front runners in any of these competitions. They've just qualified for the first major. It will take them time to build up and to get better in this competition. Um, investment and backing and full-time professional contracts as well as something that will help Northern Ireland. England have that in abundance, so give them a break. Uh, what you have to say about England is just clinical once again. Uh, really, really strong performance across the board. What I'm loving about England as well is that you're starting to see those new players coming in. You know, you're seeing the likes of uh, Ella Toon from Manchester United. She's, a, she's such a star, a brilliant goal scorer as well. Hannah Hampton coming into the team as well. They've got a new captain in Leah Williamson, who quite rightly, I think, deserves that armband. And she's clearly a good leader. She's, um, you know, a, a very patriotic person as well. I like to see that when it comes to the the, the captain of the national team. I, I actually love seeing that. I like, I like seeing that she's really behind our country and wants to make women's football better as well. So I think she's a wise choice for Serena Wiegmann. And you also look at the experience in that team as well. Lucy Bronze, I mean, Ballon d'Or winner. You know, you've got Ellen White, who still bangs them in for fun. You know, she's chasing Wayne Rooney's record of England top goal scorer. Um, and Jill Scott as well. You've also got Millie Bright, who can run a mock in defence as well. So England, a force to be reckoned with. Serena Wiegmann has them... Um, you know, skipping quite nicely to her to her beat at the moment. And I think the real challenge is in the upcoming months because next time round they've got Belgium and then they've got the Netherlands. I mean, we all know what the Netherlands can do in these competitions. So I think the challenge is still very much so ahead for England. And long may these places in the spotlight continue for Northern Ireland for the football and not for the dumb comments of their manager.